In this video, we'll be going over how to set up a simple toggle program that will allow us to hide and show objects within our graphic. Okay, so let's start off by opening a brand new graphics page and going over the basics. For this particular scenario, I'm going to use a button as the trigger to the toggle. Feel free to add a little style to your button by right clicking on the button, going down to the style section and selecting from the list of available styles. I'll go ahead and change the text uh, to read toggle button and adjust the font so that it looks a little more visible too. Okay, so now that I have my button looking good, I'll go ahead and bring out a few random objects which will serve as the objects that we will eventually be hiding and showing using the button as our toggle. Okay, so before we go any further, let's go ahead and create our toggle program. If you're familiar with JavaScript and have your own toggle code, feel free to use that within your program. If you are not too familiar with JavaScript, that's okay. We have a lot of sample code for you to choose from in our docs. In this case, we are going to use the toggle hide and show code, which can be found in our Graphic Builder's JavaScript Tips page. Go ahead and copy the code and switch back to our Finstack Graphics tab. To begin creating your program, select one of the available panels on the left and switch it over to view your available programs. On the very bottom left of the panel, there will be a plus button. Go ahead and click on that button to begin creating a brand new program. Go ahead and name your program, and once you're ready, paste the toggle code into the program's workspace. By default, our code is basically doing a search for anything that has a foo tag on it. Foo is a default term used as a placeholder in a lot of our code examples, so feel free to change that to anything you'd like it to be. In this case, I'm going to change the foo tag to be another tag, uh, which in this case will be toggle me. This tag is arbitrary and can be anything you want it to be. Just remember that this is the tag that you will need to add onto any objects that you'll eventually want to toggle on and off using this program. Okay, so now we need to set a program target filter. This indicates what the program is going to run on. In this case, we will be running the program on our button, so here you can put in a unique tag that will go on the button or any object that you're virtually going to be using to trigger the toggle program. Uh, so in this case, I'll set my program target filter to look for the marker tag called my button. And once again, this tag is arbitrary and can be anything you want it to be. Okay, so before I save and close my program, I want to make sure that this program will run every time I click on my target. So to do this, we'll need to open our variables menu and enable the invoke function option and set it to invoke on a mouse event and then select click as the event itself. So what this is saying is whenever our target filter is clicked on, the function within the program will run itself. And since our function is a toggle, we are basically saying that every time our button is clicked, anything with the toggle me tag on it will hide and show itself. Okay, so at this point, the program is ready. Don't forget to hit the save button on the bottom right corner to save the program properly. All right, so in our program, we set a few tags that now need to be added to the objects so the program knows what to run on. Since our button is the trigger, we must match the tag that was set in our program's target filter, which in my case is the my button tag. So I'm going to add that on there. Next, we'll need to add a tag to the objects that will be toggled. The easiest way to do this is to select all of the toggle objects and right click on them. Go to the tools section and select the apply batch tags tool. This will allow us to tag all of our selected objects at the same time. Select custom filter, which will then automatically fill in the filter with the selected object's IDs. And then in the apply tag section, type in the tag that you had set in your program, uh, which in my case is toggle me. Okay, so now that we have our trigger object tagged and our toggle objects tagged, we can now test the program by going into preview mode. As you can see, when I click on my button, the three objects I had tagged now hide and show every time I click the button. So that's basically how you would create and use the toggle code to toggle an object or several objects on and off in Finstack. So now you may be wondering, uh, what's the easiest and quickest way to get this program into multiple graphics in my project? And to be honest, there's several different ways to do that. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys two different methods, which I find to be the most common and most efficient ways of doing this. The first method I'm going to demonstrate for you is uh, utilizes the copy records tool that can be found in the graphic builders edit menu on the right. 
The copy records tool basically allows for you to copy any records within a graphic and then allows you to paste them into other graphics using the same tool. So in this case, we're going to copy our toggle program and paste it into another graphic. Okay, so first open the copy record slider and select the copy option. Next, we'll need to define a filter to pinpoint the program we want to copy. The easiest way to do that is to find it by name. Um, and to do that, all you have to do is type in name equals equals and then in between two quotation marks, type in the exact name of your program. In my case, the name I'll be searching for is Toggle Program with a capital T and a capital P because that's what I named it uh, when I first created the program. Once you're done, hit apply and it will inform you uh, on how many records match your filter. In this case, I got one match, which is exactly what I was expecting. Okay, so now that our program has been copied, let's go ahead and open up one of our existing graphics. The first thing you're gonna want to do once your graphic opens up is to copy the program back into the newly opened graphic. To demonstrate this, I'm gonna open up our program panel on the left so you can see the program being added in. And if you look now, you can tell that the program is not currently there. So all we need to do is go back to the copy records tool on the right and select the paste option. As soon as we click on the paste option, you should see your copied program get added into the program panel listed on the left. Okay, so now that the program is in, we can bring out a button, customize it the way we'd like, and then add the target filter tag to it. Uh, in my case, that was my button, so I'm just gonna add the my button tag to this new button. Uh, in this particular graphic, uh, I've already added a few customized labels which serve as indicators for where each t-stat is located on this floor. If you look over at my layers panel on the top left, you can see that the t-stats have been organized into their own layer, uh, which in this case uh, I've called the toggle layer. So what's nice about having them all in one layer uh, in this particular scenario is that instead of having to tag each label individually, I can just add one tag to the entire layer itself so that way the entire layer is getting toggled uh, to hide and show when I click on the button. So with the toggle layer selected, let's go down to our properties menu, switch over to the advanced section and add in our marker tag. My marker tag is toggle me, so I'll add that in there and now we can test this out in preview mode. Okay, so the toggle looks like it's working great, but let's say the end user doesn't want the t-stats to be showing uh, when the graphic is first loaded. That's easy. All you have to do is select the stat layer again, go back into the advanced properties, and in there you will see a section called style. Inside the style section, add a property called visibility and set the value to be hidden. This is exactly what the toggle program is doing, except now we're kind of manually forcing it to be hidden by default. Okay, um, and once you do that, go ahead and test it out one more time in preview mode. And if everything looks great, save the graphic and you're done. Okay, so now let's go over uh, another method. Uh, the second method involves creating a model. Okay, so let's go back now to our original page where we first created the program. Instead of copying the program separately, what we can do is simply save the button itself as a model. Now, when a model is saved, it's important to note that any additional uh, records or programs that are involved with the model object will also be saved into the model. So to save our button as a model, all we need to do is select the button and um, I would probably give it a proper name. So go ahead and name your button. And when you're ready, click on the save button found in the properties menu, which will in turn save your model into the database. So in this case, since our button had a program running on it, the program is gonna get saved into the model as well. Okay, so now that our model is saved, we can now open up any graphic and get started. Now that we're in our new graphic, all we have to do is go into our components panel and scroll to the very bottom or type in the name of your model in the search menu to bring it up. Go ahead and drag your model out into the graphic workspace. This will automatically bring in our program as well. So now all you have to do is tag the objects that you want to be toggled and that's it. We hope you've enjoyed this video and hopefully you feel more confident in creating your own models and programs. Once you learn these basic strategies, you'll be able to do so much more in FinStack and be able to utilize the software's capabilities at a whole new capacity.
So be sure to check out our docs page at docs.finproducts.com and our YouTube channel for more tips and tricks on how to utilize Finstack 4.0 uh, to its fullest. Thanks for watching. <laughs>